Good afternoon, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick, and I'm here at Grace Episcopal Church in my office today because I thought it would be really appropriate on this 14th day of October as we celebrate the festival day of Samuel Isaac Joseph Shorskorsky. He was the Bishop of Shanghai in the 20th century and uh, an amazing linguistic uh, uh, at his, in his period of time. I'll tell you a little bit more about him in just a few moments and why I'm sitting in my office today uh, leading our prayer, which is really appropriate because you can do our prayers anywhere you are in your office. You don't have to be in a church, especially in, during this pandemic. It's very appropriate. We need our prayer. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence. We are on page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 84, found in your Book of Common Prayer, on page 707. It also found in your Holy Scriptures. If you'd like to join me in resuscitating and, uh, or just reflecting on it in silence, you're welcome to do so however you would like. Psalm 84, verses 1 through 6. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of the springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from Paul's le second letter to the Corinthians. Chapter 4, verses 11 through 18. For while we, we, we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, both life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith, that is, in accordance with Scripture, I believed and, I, and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with, all, with you into his holy presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight mom momentary affliction is preparing us for the eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what we can see be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was saying, today is the festival day or commemoration of Samuel Sorsorsky. He was born in May, on May 6, 1831 of Jewish parents. And in Lithuania, in the town, a little town called 
Turgenjin. He was in his early education. He directed most of his time to the rabbinic uh, faith and to study to be a rabbi. He, when he went to his graduate studies in Germany, he was interested in Christianity because of some Christian missionaries from London Society of Promoting Christianity Amongst the Jews at that time. And is in a, his own reading of the Hebrew scriptures and translations of the New Testament. He decided in 1854, as he immigrated to America and interested in and entered into the Western Theological Seminary in Pittsburgh, it was there he wanted was going to become a Presbyterian. But after two years of study, he decided to become an Episcopalian. It was there that he then entered into his studies at General Theological Seminary in New York City, which where he graduated in 1859. After his ordination to, as an Episcopal priest, Bishop Boone at that period of time was asking for help in China. And so Samuel Soskorsky decided to travel all the way to China. In, from 1862 to 1875, he lived in Peking, where he began translating the Bible into different, and parts of the Book of Common Prayer into, Man, from Man, from, into Mandarin and into English, both in the translation. After Bishop Williams left his seat there in Shanghai and Japan, uh, after he left, he was transferred to Japan, Shoskorsky was nominated and elected to become and consecrated bishop of the uh, Shanghai Diocese in 1877. He was consecrated at Grace Church in New York City. At St. John's University in Shanghai, where he began uh, that university, he also continued his translations of the Bible and his work into Wen Li. He was struck with paralysis in 1883, and because of that, he traveled back to the States but he couldn't find really helpful translation here in the States from to, into Chinese. So he traveled back to Shanghai in 1895. And then two years later, after he had finished most of his writings and translations into Chinese of the Bible and the Book of Common Prayer, he died on October 15th, tomorrow, in 1906. He was quoted before he passed away saying, and why I'm sitting here in my office, I think we'll explain. He said, I have sat in this chair for over 20 years. It seemed very hard at first, but God knew best. He kept me for the work for which I am best fitted. He is buried in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and with his wife, who was incredibly supportive during his time and his diligence of translating with one finger, his index fingers on a typewriter at his desk. We give thanks today for this incredible man and dedicated servant of God. He gives us inspiration, I think, for many of us as we continue to go through this pandemic and sometimes our faith is being tested I think Samuel Swiskorski is a great inspiration for us in our walk with Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our prayers on page 106 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, my sisters and brothers, let us offer the prayer that Jesus taught us, and I'm sure Samuel Swiskorski prayed diligently as well. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. O God, who in your providence called Joseph Suskorsky to the ministry of this church, 
and gave him the gifts and the perseverance to translate the Holy Scriptures. Inspire us by his example and prayers to commit our, our talents to your service, confident that you uphold those whom you call through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us offer our prayers as people of God today. Today I'd like you to turn with me to page 821 for our prayers of the people. It's a litany for our country and for sound government. Page 821. O Lord, our governor, bless the leaders of our land that we may be a people that peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations on, of this earth. Help us, O Lord Christ. Lord, keep this nation under your care. To the president and members of the cabinet, to governors of states and of commonwealths, mayors of cities, and to all in administrative authority, grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. Give us grace to your servants, O Lord. To senators and representatives and those who make our laws in states, cities, commonwealths, and towns, give courage and wisdom and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people, and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. Give us grace to your servants, O Lord. To the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. Give grace to your servants, O Lord. And finally, Teach our people to rely on your strength and to accept their responsibilities of their fellow citizens, that they may elect trustworthy leaders and make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and honor to your holy name. For the, yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as above all. Amen. I'd like to also offer prayers today for our nation. I'd also like to pray for in thanksgiving for those who are celebrating birthdays or wedding anniversaries. I'd like to especially give a wonderful shout out to Hannah and uh, uh, Father, uh, oh my gosh, I just blanked out. <laughs> They just had a baby, <laughs> and so I just apologized. Uh, we pray, O oh God, in thanksgiving for uh, all those uh, who are having uh, children today. We especially give thanks for uh, Miss Hannah on the delivery of a six-pound baby boy. Uh, we pray and give thanks, O oh Lord, for them and their family today. We give thanks though, for all those who are celebrating a birthday and a wedding anniversary this week especially to Ashley Shadone yesterday, Michael Taylor, and Peggy Henney. And we give thanks, O oh Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We'd also like to pray for those who are ailing at this time. We pray, O oh God, for John Shadle as he's recovering from shoulder surgery. We pray, O oh God, for uh, Henry Barber. We pray for Jim uh, Zelmer. We pray for Patty. We pray for all those who are ailing. I'd like to pray as well for my wife, Susie, and her shoulder as well. We pray for those who are strenuously uh, undergoing uh, uh, self-isolation because of the coronavirus, those who have been diagnosed with the coronavirus, and especially we pray for all doctors and nurses. And give thanks, O oh Lord God, for their care and well-being to helping those in hospitals and those in nursing facilities, especially at Gaither Suites, Rivercrest, and the Lakes. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon all those as well who have passed away today. We pray, O oh God, for all those who have lost a loved one, especially to the coronavirus, and, and could not be with their loved one at the time of their passing. We pray, O oh God, in thanksgiving for the gift of this life and for the gift of love, 
We pray for all those who are struggling today because at, in the Gulf Coast area with flooding uh, and rebuilding things, uh, their houses and picking up uh, the natural disaster from Hurricane Delta recently. And for those fighting wildfires in California and Oregon and the air pollution that those fires have caused. We pray for all those who are struggling today uh, during this pandemic. Heavenly Father, answer our prayers. We ask this. We pray, O oh God, in thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Please join me again this evening at 9 p.m. for Compline Night Prayer. Have a wonderful afternoon and a good day.